Top China News is sponsored by Sinopec. Sinopec, making every drop count. The fifth session of National People's Congress began in the Great Hall of the People on March the fifth, attracting widespread attention from both domestic and international media. Yeah, we can hear about the planned targets of the economic and social development of China for the coming year, for the GDP growth for the 2012, for the um, inflation level, and that's it. So it is always um, important for journalists from outside and from China. With the meeting due to start at 9, preparation was well underway in front of the Great Hall of the People at 7 a.m. for media from around the world. With global interest in Chinese economic policy growing, many here predict Beijing will become the focus of worldwide attention over the next two weeks. Officials put the number of foreign correspondents registered to report on the two meetings at close to 900, a huge net increase from last year. U.S. Bloomberg News alone has a crew of 56, and there is an impressive presence of journalists from the BRIC countries. Overseas Chinese media agencies have a total of 60 registered reporters. The Chinese government has set the country's GDP growth target for 2012 at 7.5 percent. Premier Wen Jiabao announced the target in his government work report following the fifth session of the 11th National People's Congress. It is the first time that a GDP growth target has been set under 8 percent. Here I wish to stress that we hope a slightly lower GDP growth rate will set a better match for the targets for the 12th five-year plan and guide people in all sectors to focus on accelerating the transformation of our economy into a more sustainable and efficient mode of economic development so as to achieve a higher level and higher quality development over an extended period of time. Wen stressed the stability of the overall pricing level was in the direct interest of the people in economic and social development. China, he said, will control prices and inflation through the effective execution of microeconomic policies, management of the supply of money and credit, and the maintenance of equilibrium in overall supply and demand. House Minister Chen Zhu has told reporters that government policy is encouraging private investment in the medical industry. Recently, on numerous occasions, Premier Wen has touched upon the subject of attracting private capital to some of the yet-to-open areas for diversity, including education and the medical industry, and those policies are already in place. Chen Zhu also emphasized access to services and level playing field as key consideration in the plans for private involvement in the medical industry. For the Department of Health, good access is very important, and the threshold should be the same for public and private hospitals alike, and nonprofit medical agencies should enjoy the same rights as public hospitals to be selected as health insurance agencies. Personnel evaluation should also be equal in this area. In some areas of China, the new policies are already being put into practice by medical staff. Traveling arrangement, Chen Zhu says, will combine high quality medical resources with private capital. What you are seeing is a picture taken in Guizhen Town, a pharmaceutical company at the center of controversy over the practice of bare bile extraction. Bear bile is considered a previous raw material in Chinese medicine, used for alleviating pain and inflammation. After the technology of bear bile extraction was introduced into China, bear bile farming quickly became a booming industry. The practice provoked fury among thousands of internet users after it was spotted on an IPO application listing published by China's security regulator on February the 1st. Local citizens also voiced their opinion over this issue. I think it's very cruel and totally unacceptable. The bear is cute. I truly think it's very cruel. Guizhen Town, a pharmaceutical supplier of traditional Chinese medicine products, is one of the China's largest producer of bear bile. The company is planning to raise capital to expand its farming area for bears to 3,000 mu and to triple the bear population from 400 to 1,200 at its breeding center. 
facing a public relations disaster, Guizhen Town decided to open its doors to the public. The following are some of the statements made by people who have been to Guizhen Town. The process is relatively calm. What I saw from the internet is very different from what I saw on site. Maybe the third generation drainage technology is more advanced, making it less cruel and better than traditional methods. My opinion remains unchanged. It's very inhumane, and the company is unjustified in exploiting bear bile for profit. The industry shouldn't have a place in our society. A rare Chinese Ru Yao Kill porcelain bowl made in the North Song Dynasty between the year 960 to 1127 is expected to fetch between 60 million and 80 million Hong Kong dollars when it goes under the hammer at Sotheby's auction house. Its high guide price attracted attention at the viewing before the auction. Ru Yao made porcelain items especially for the emperor and royal family. According to Shen and Wen, a veteran collector from Sotheby Porcelain and Technology Department, there are only 79 surviving Ru Ware dishes in the world, and most of them have been acquired by museums. The Soundflower Wash is the only one to feature an organic floral shape in an old pack. He expected the piece to sell well despite the current global economic situation. To high-end collectors, rare and delicate artworks are impacted relatively little by the economic situation. So this kind of Ru Yao is precious, and the impact is also relatively small. Other pieces in the same auction include two Ming Dynasty porcelains. The first, a large blue and white dish measuring nearly 60 centimeter across, is estimated at 50 million to 80 million Hong Kong dollars. The second is a stained bowl also from the Ming Dynasty. Smaller than the dish, it features dancing dragon motifs and also comes with an estimated guide price between 50 million and 80 million Hong Kong dollars.